Pair run as warranty for Movix Space 360. With the recent announcement of the latest version of Photoshop CC, now having dedicated features for editing 360 images, I thought I might point out that Affinity Photo by Sheriff have had this feature since their version 1.5 release, which was over a year ago. For those who don't know, Affinity Photo is a great alternative to Photoshop, and for those who don't like the Adobe subscription model, Affinity Photo offer most, if not all, and more features of Photoshop while maintaining an extremely affordable once-off purchase price. After having a look at how Photoshop have implemented their 360 editing capabilities, it looks like they basically took it straight out from Affinity Photo. And from speaking to a few friends and colleagues of mine and realised that a lot of them haven't even heard of Affinity Photos before, I thought it's worthwhile creating this video to show everyone how it's done within Affinity Photo. First of all, let me confess that personally I still use Photoshop a lot more than I use Affinity Photo. And it's largely just due to the fact that I've been using Photoshop pretty much forever. From what I've seen so far and from what I've used so far, everything I can do in Photoshop I can definitely do within Affinity Photo. Both Affinity Photo and the new 360 tools in Photoshop Photoshop work on the same concept that you project your echo rectangular images into 360 perspective but this also means that both of them have the same issue that you can't maintain editing layers within the same 360 projection stack which means that you lose the ability to roll back certain changes so you have to remember to keep more backups of each layer separately. So even though the 360 editing tools are great on both of these apps I think depending what you're editing sometimes it's still worthwhile editing 360 photos using the polar coordinates methods, especially if you're creating layers for use for 360 video editing. Okay, enough of my rambling, so let's open up Affinity Photo and let's just run through editing a 360 photo using some of the tools within Affinity Photo. Um, so for the purpose of today, we'll open up a photo that I've taken previously at the Sydney Opera House and what we'll do, we'll take out the tripod, take out me who's holding up the monopod and the camera above me and also add in some text which is embedded into the 360 sphere of the photo rather than what you normally see in 360 photos where it's kind of hovering over the image. Um, so what we've got here, I've opened up the file, it's a pretty standard file that I took from the Opera House and I quite like this picture. So let's take a look at the 360 editing features within Affinity Photos. So in here, they've got a concept called Live Projection and this is where you can change your echo rectangular images into a 360 projection so you can view and edit your 360 photos in a manner that the 360 photos are actually viewed. And the first thing I normally do is create a copy of the original image uh, in the layers. And the reason why I do that is because with 360 editing, it doesn't really allow the concept of layers. So a lot of times you have to merge it into the layer that you're working on or you're working directly on the layer itself. This is definitely one of the downside of editing using this method. And this seems to be the same case with how Photoshop CC 2018 have implemented the 360 features as well. And that's why depending on what you're editing sometimes it's still better to use the polar coordinates methods of editing 360 photos so as you can see from what i'm doing here i'm just scrolling around the image just like you normally do with a 360 viewer but now this is all within your editing app and here i um, just want to basically clone out myself in the photos i'm holding the camera you can see me holding the phone taking the photo and you can see some shadows on the floor. So I'm just using it. the imprinting brush tool, which basically allow me to select the area that I want um, Affinity Photo to try to replace with areas close by. Um, so first I'll basically just highlight myself in the, in the photo and it's doing its job as you can see. When it comes back, there you go. It's done a pretty good job as trying to, it basically remove my whole body and have done a pretty good job at replacing it with the tiles underneath where I'm standing. So I'm just going to do the same thing with my shadow there. I'm just highlighting the whole area of my shadow, but as you can see, there's part of my shadow that's kind of out of the image there. So we'll probably have to go back into live projection again and scroll it up a little bit. Um, again, as you can see, it's done a pretty good job as merging it through. And once we're happy with that, then we want to go back and scroll around in the 360 view again. We gotta use a select tool to select the layer that we're on and we gotta click on the live projection button. And once that comes back, we can scroll through again. And as you can see now, we can see the other shadow a little bit higher in that frame. So I'm gonna do the same thing and use the in painting tool and paint that through and just make sure that I've covered every single bit that's got my shadow holding up my monopod as you can see with the camera up the top and hopefully this will clean up pretty nicely and if not i normally just get the clone standard clone tool and i'll just uh, match it off a few areas and try to get 
get it a, lo a little bit cleaner. So we can see, so as you can see, we can scroll in a little bit, and I just got a clone tool and just try to clone out a little, a few bit of areas. Um, the line there looks pretty good, so I don't think I have to do much. Otherwise, you can again make the line a little bit straighter using the clone tool. But overall, I'm pretty happy with that. There's just a few um, black spot around here with the tiles that didn't match quite right at the angles. So we could tidy it up with the clone tool a little bit. But apart from that, it looks pretty good. And it's as simple as that to basically edit out your tripod for your 360 photos or cameras. And in this case, it was actually me being the tripod. And this definitely makes it a lot easier than trying to edit it out in the echo rectangular view itself. Um, although the polar coordinate method is pretty much as simple as this as well so this gives you an option which will make it quite easy for you to see the actual projection of what you're editing it gives you a live view of this 360 view and you can scroll around to make sure that your edit looks good when viewed in the 360 perspective okay another thing to note is that we actually done the editing or the cloning within the actual layer of the image itself and we can't actually use well we could actually use a separate layer for it but we can't actually keep that as a separate layer and apply it to the 360 image and i'll probably explain this a little bit better now we're trying to add some text to the image so what i'm trying to do i'm just going to put in the sydney opera house and i want to add it in so it looks like it's part of the pavement itself i don't want it to hover out kind of on top of the image like you normally see when people try to add in text in the echo rectangular format so what i'll do you'll scroll around the 360 image and try to get it into a uh, i suppose a perpendicular view so you can see it flat and the reason for that is whatever you kind of applied to this layer it would be in the same perspective of it so if it's not flat and you can see that um, they're not making 90 degrees angles when it kind of where the pavement crossing over the whatever you put on top whatever sticker or logo or whatever you put on top will need to be either adjusted and skewed so that the perspective is right or it just won't look like it's part of that layer or part of that perspective so the easiest way is kind of scroll around to make sure that the perspective right before you add anything on top of this so we're trying to get it looking face down completely onto the pavement so we've got a perspective right here and i'm just all i'm doing i'm just putting the sydney opera house and i'm just i'll try to make it look like it's part of the pavement so what i'll do i'll just change the color into white and I'll just play with some of the text effects. I'll probably do a uh, inner bevel to make it look like it's kind of sunk into the pavement. So here we go, we're just gonna add the bevel here, inner bevel, and we'll probably add a stroke to make sure, or to make it stand out a little bit more. Um, I'm just gonna play with a few text function and, and I'll do this quickly. I'll probably fast forward this a little bit. And then once we're ready, um, I'll come back to you. So the next thing, I'm just going to make a copy of this text layer. And the reason why I do this is when you actually want to apply this text onto your 360 projection, you have to merge down onto that projection layer. And this is important, otherwise it will just be a layer hovering over the projection and it won't actually be part of your 360 view. So now that we've merged down the layer, we can go back to the live projection and we should be able to scroll around and the Sydney Opera House text there will be kind of part of the brickwork down there as you can see. It's looking pretty good. So when we scroll, scroll around, the perspective of that text is tied to the perspective you're looking into that 360 views, which is exactly what we're after. So that's looking good. Okay, now what I'll do, I'll probably just use the same, the copy of the Sydney Opera House text that I've got there and I'll insert it into the image so that it's kind of perpendicular to the original one just to show you how we could do that. Um, it's not as simple as the original one because the first one we're kind of looking straight down at 90 degrees so it's kind of a really flat view. We didn't have to skewer this text to make it fit into the right perspective. But in this case we're kind of at a diagonal. Um, we can't really get a 360 image to scroll around to be a perpendicular view. So what we need to do, we need to skew the text a little bit to make it match the angle and the perspective of the flooring there. So in Photoshop, you would normally use the skewed function and in Infinity Photo, you use the function called shear, which is basically the same thing as a skew in Photoshop. Um, they just call it a different name. So as you can see here, the controls allow you to skew the object or the image or the layer in whichever way that you want and to get into the right perspective. So I'll quickly just do this and then put it in. 
So again, the, the thing to really remember with the 360 editing features in the Affinity Photo and the same thing with Photoshop CC 2018 is that you always have to merge the layer that you're working on down to the actual 360 projection or the uh, equi rectangular projection layer. Um, if you don't merge down onto that layer, your layer is basically independent of the projection and will not be outputted as part of the equi rectangular format when you actually go back to view it in that format. What this does mean is that it takes out layering as a function that you can use to help you manage your changes and manage your editing. And also the other thing is that by not having layers separately, it makes it harder for you to export your edit on the clone area out as a separate transparent PNG file to be used in your 360 video work. And that's why depending on what you're editing your 360 images for, um, there's still a place to use the polar coordinate methods, especially if you're trying to clone out tripods or clone out certain elements for your video work. Okay, now let's check back on the text, the second text on the screen there. It's now looking pretty good. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. So what we can do now, we should <coughs> merge it down onto the layer, which I have done. And we can go back to a live projection and scroll around and see what it looks like. So hopefully it will look pretty good whichever angle that you look at it. So now it's going around. Both takes kind of look like they're part of the um, opera house brickwork, uh, tile work there, so which is good. And that was pretty easy edit. It's um, a lot simpler than the trial and error that you have to do if you're trying to insert them in the echo rectangles angle. And this is what the echo rectangular image now looks like. So it's got the um, the two edit text element there. We removed the tripod and myself from the photo. So you, you can see that image is completely cleaned out. So we can just do a before and after view of this. So ha let's have a look at the before image. As you can see, it would have been a bit of a pain to try to edit it out in this view. Um, and we did it pretty easily using the 360 editing tools within Affinity Photo. And also now, these features are also included in Photoshop CC. Hopefully this has been useful to you guys showing you how to use the 360 tools within Affinity Photo. If you've got any questions or any comments, please comment in my YouTube channels below. And or pop me a message, I'm always happy to answer. Until next time, it's one here from Movie Space 360, and I'll catch you on the next video.